ChatGPT's Code Interpreter plugin has just become available for all ChatGPT Plus subscribers. That means you can be able to execute the code that ChatGPT suggests directly within your browser and see immediate results. I've been playing with it for the last few days and so I wanted to highlight some of the most interesting use cases that I can see for developers along with a couple of other left field examples too. So with that said, let's get right on with it and show you some examples. So under beta features, you have this code interpreter plugin and you just need to make sure that's switched on so that you've got access. By default, you're still going to be dropped into ChatGPT 3.5. So you actually need to go across to GPT-4 and select the code interpreter if you want it to be enabled. Remember that GPT-4 currently has this cap of 25 messages for every three hours. So you're going to be limited in the number of conversations you can have. So you need to be sparing. So I asked code interpreter to, to write a regex of matching UK mobile numbers. So this is a fairly common thing. You want to match phone numbers from a piece of text. I've given it a couple of examples and it appears with the region codes. So this can be formatted in a number of different ways and it's a bit of a pain for me to write as a regular expression. I'd need to go through a number of iterations of this. Now, ChatGPT goes, okay, I can do that. Here's a regular expression that would match those numbers that you've suggested. But the trick here is that Code Interpreter allows you to actually test what is said. So when it suggested this, I've actually gone back to it and said, please, can you test these code uh, this, this code that you've suggested against my examples? And it goes back and actually tests these examples against the regular expression that it suggested. It will outline the full code um, that it's done to do that. This is generally hidden um, and we can expand it to take a look. So you can see that actually in the first statement there, it's saying, Apologies for the confusion, the regular expression is not actually matching any of your test strings because they contain non-digit characters. So immediately, it because it, I've asked it to test this, it's gone back, tested it, and realized that what it suggested isn't correct. So straight away, it goes off and revises this example, and it uses the this input data that is suggested there. So it, again, test these against the phone numbers. And, so, and you can see there it's matching two of them, but not the last one, and suggests a different regular expression again, and tries that one. And you can see again, it's also not matching. So we've had one, two, three, another one here, where it matches all of them. But actually I've noticed um, in going back to it that it doesn't include the original example I gave it where it's got the leading zero there. So I kind of feed back to it. Can you include that as well. The original example I gave you hasn't been included. And it says, okay, well, I include this as well. So it's got the test data again. So it goes back and tests against the, this new test data that is created with these two extra examples. And lo and behold, it actually matches all of them. So it's great that we can be farming off this kind of mundane task to chat GPT in order to get it to work. And it's great that it can test it, iterate through, um, and show me the code that it used to generate it. So I can take this Python, dump it straight in to a script locally and use it straight away. Okay, so the next example I wanted to show you is code review. So I've got this piece of code that I've uploaded, which is actually from one of the advent code challenges. Within that file, there's not actually, it's not well documented at all. There is no code comments or anything like that. And the file is named day 11. So there isn't any way you can kind of hallucinate from the file name. And I've just said, what does the code do in this? So to describe the problem from this advent of code challenge, basically there is a bunch of monkeys. They all have a number of individual items. There is an operation that is performed on the items that they have. And depending on the operation that's performed means it goes to a different monkey. And so at the end of that, they will have different integer values after anyway. Basically what happens is there's a number of, a ton of iterations that go on through quite a convoluted process. And I'm trying to get, see if ChatGPT can understand that. It immediately identifies that it looks like it's for a programming problem, possibly for a coding challenge like Advent of Code. This was the Advent of Code from 2022. So it means that it's not gonna know the answer to it because actually it's cutoff date is far earlier than that. The script defines monkey class. Each instance of the monkey class has a worry stack. So it's identified that all correctly. The class is actually called monkey in the file. So that's a bit of a dig giveaway for it. Um, 
and then there's part one answer and part two answers. So it reads from a file and it's reading all the input data from a file in order to um, process a load of things and come back with a value as an answer. And I actually ask it here, can you create some test data that the script could pass? Because I'm interested to know if it's identified it so well that you can actually just create some mock data for it. So you can see there that it's created a cor what looks like a correct format of it. And so I just say, can you run the script against the data that you created and print what the output is? So it says it can't do that because it can't run arbitrary scripts, but it can actually just pull that in and use it in the current session. So that's what it does. So following all that, and after actually getting it finally loaded into the script, it runs it, gets these answers, and um, moves on. So we want to get ideas of whether this can be refactored. And it says, yeah, here's a bunch of ideas. Um, we can reduce complexity of list operations, avoid repeat computations, etc., etc. So to go a little deeper, uh, let's look at a data set that I got from Kaggle, which is um, of movies over the last 50 years, I think it is. And the interesting thing about this is that I've uploaded this as a zip file. So that's one interesting trick is that if you're data is exceeds um, a certain size, you can upload a zip file and it will unzip it and understand what's in it. So you can see here it uses zip and unzips that data. So it says the data you provided is movie statistic data set. Now I can kind of probably interpret a lot from the fact that it's named this. This is what came down from Kaggle. Um, so it's yeah, it, I would have preferred it was named something else, but it's able to see that it is data about movies and that it has title movie and a bunch of other data. Um, and so I go, okay, well, give me three non-obvious insights, complete with plausible explanations on this data. It shows it loading this data, looking through it, and immediately comes back with insights that are really interesting straight away. There's an 18... It's 1,835 unique directors in the data set with some directors not specified. The data set includes movies from 2,458 unique production dates, with the most common date being 2011. 23rd of September 2011, I don't know why. The average movie runtime is approximately 110 minutes. Anyway, so the non-obvious insights it's come back with are the correlation of budget and success of a movie, the impact of a director's experience on the success of a movie, and the trend of movie genres over time. And it says what it's going to need to be able to calculate those. So it goes off, makes those calculations, and does this huge amount of you can see all these huge amount of calculations having to convert things to date times, having to strip out um, years from the date that is already there. And we've got all these captured as steps. The correlation between the the experience and the worldwide gross revenue is approximately 0 0.13, indicating a weak positive relationship. This suggests that the director's experience has a minor influence on both the critical and financial success of a movie which is interesting. I don't think I would have guessed that myself. So based on this data that is collected, I've asked it to graph these insights for me using the most appropriate charts with the type of data. And you can see it comes back with these fantastic graphs of the insights that it's suggested. And then I just asked to write it out to a PDF. Can you write these things out to PDF? And it goes through the steps that it needs to do that. And it creates this movie insights file. So if you download that, you can have a look at it in the PDF and you see all the graphs right now. It hasn't included the analysis that I asked for, but that's fine. The thing I noticed in that is that actually the correlation between director's experience and worldwide gross revenue, you have this weird point at 300, over 300 movies. So I said, who's the director who's directed over 300 movies? We could have this huge point. Actually, turns out it's one that's not marked. So you can see at the top here, we have directors that are just marked as a dash I'm not sure why that is, because actually some of these movies are, I mean, the directors, I think, are listed on, I, I would assume, are listed on IMDb for Avengers Endgame, etc. Anyway, so I realised that actually what it's done is we've got a whole load of data for directors that don't exist in the dataset. So I just immediately go back and say, can you filter that out and update with the new data that you've got? And 
lo and behold, comes back with filtered movie insights PDF and is able to give me a new PDF with that data adjusted. Then I asked it, can you draw a trend line for the director's experience graph and render it for me? And it's gone through all the steps for that as well. You can see that these are not in small steps. They are huge. And actually you can see it's correcting itself several times here. Um, so yeah, it's corrected itself several times here, iterates on what it's doing, and then eventually gives me a PDF with all the trend lines. And that's actually ends up being for every graph, not just the one that I've asked for. And finally, I ask it there, what's the main takeaway from this data set? And it says, so yeah, the main thing being this data set suggests that while factors like budget and director's experience may have some influence on movies financial success and ratings they're not the sole determinants of its success so this kind of blows me away how um how easy it is to get interpretations from this this was probably what 10 minutes work to go through and do all of this get it filtered get all the graphs if i was doing this on my own it would take ages like there's no question that it would take me a ridiculous amount of time compared to that so it's incredibly impressive with the fact that we've got this ability to upload files now that we can do this sort of stuff so next let's look at image analysis so i asked it can it you detect the edges in the following image which is just an image of uh, myself from a previous video and you can see it converts it to grayscale here it's actually a color image and then performs this edge detection algorithm. Now, it might not be clear from that, and it wasn't to me, uh, and I, so I asked it to um, enlarge this image, and you can see the outline there more clearly. And it's kind of impressive that it's actually not got any of the edges of things in the background there. It's actually clearly got me as an outline shape. Um, it may well have them as grey um, points, I guess. So some more image analysis here. I asked it to extract the dominant colours from uh, this unsplashed image of a sunset that I found. And it says it can do that with k-means clustering. Wanted to know how many colours I wanted. So feedback 7 shows you how to go about doing k-means clustering and detecting those. And I also asked for the hex codes for them, because actually if we're using it for, say, a web development site or something like that um, and you can see that it happily extracts the hex code and we get this nice color palette so yeah i also asked it if it could zoom in on the center of this image which it also does very well so we get this nice cropped image to the center another interesting feature that code interpreter has it's got the ability to ocr image text so you can upload images and have it recognize the text that's on them so i tried this with a couple of mathematical equations and unfortunately it didn't recognize a few of them so i tried this with the hilbert curve and traveling salesman problem and it didn't recognize either of them it was actually only when i update uploaded a simple literally quadratic equation that it recognized the text in that and it was able to identify that it uh, represents a quadratic equation so you might have better experience than me but i think that basically where things fall over multiple lines in some of these equations that it's going to struggle uh, being able to recognize them there's been a lot of examples of using the um, code interpreter for creating videos and doing these kind of zoom out images. I did try to do that and failed quite miserably. It basically was running out of memory and it kept doing it. I tried it a number of different times and it failed pretty miserably at that. So you wouldn't be able to use it for video creation and they were fairly basic videos anyway. So I don't think it's something that you want to use it for. I was able to create a GIF uh, animation using green matrix letters so you might have seen this example so i tried it out for myself um, again it shows you how to create this in python and has a number of different frames where the letters are falling down i think a few of these i'm going to be using but majority of them day to day are not going to be useful the data analysis side of this is really useful and i think that's the main thing that developers should be looking for this for so yeah i hope you enjoyed the video um i'll be checking this out more over the coming weeks and seeing what else i can do with it um if you like the video then consider subscribing to the channel give it a thumbs up all that sort of social stuff and i'll speak to you soon in a new video all right bye for now bye